In this video, we learn how to determine the rate law using two methods, the integration and the half-life method. In prior videos, we have uh, defined what the rate law of a chemical reaction is. And the rate law is simply how the rate of the reaction depends on the concentration of reagents. Uh, so for a reaction A to give products, we can always write the rate law as this. Rate, which is defined as the change in concentration uh, of reagents as a function of time with a negative sign is going to be equal to a common expression in which you have a proportionality to the concentration of that reagent to some power that you have to determine. Okay, so we have seen that um, this expression is very useful in the integrated version in which uh, if you know the rate constant and the order of the reaction then you can come up with ways to figure out how the concentration of reagents uh, disappears as a function of time, and those were the integrated rate laws. Right, so what we're going to learn to do here is actually how to determine what this order is, x, and what the rate constant is. Okay, so again in this video we're going to see two methods to determine the rate law. First is the integration method, and then the half-life method. Right, so what is the integration method? The integration method simply consists of uh, using the integrated rate laws to see if uh, the variation of the concentration of reagent as a function of time matches with uh, what we know for uh, a given order. So for example, if the reaction is first a uh, zero order, okay, we actually know that the integrated rate law is equal to the concentration of A is equal to the concentration of A at time zero minus K sub T. For a first order reaction, we know that uh, the way that the concentration changes on time is like this, minus kT, and then for a second order reaction with one reagent, the way uh, the integrated rate law is like this, one over a naught plus kT. And again, that will be for a zero order reaction, that is for a first order reaction, and this is for a second order reaction. Something that is common in these expressions is that they all depend linearly on time. So doing linear fits to this expression could be fairly simple. For example, uh, the way to uh, make a linear representation of this expression is to plot time in the y-axis and the concentration of A in the, uh, in the x-axis, time in the x-axis, and the concentration of A in the y-axis. Okay? Uh, that means that this should be the equation of a straight line where um, A0 is the intercept with the y-axis and the slope is equal to uh, minus k. Right, so you have a representation that looks like this, where the slope is equal to minus k. Right, so then you can determine uh, the rate constant and the order of the reaction if you take um, co uh, measurements of the concentration of phase of of time, and then if you represent them like this, and you have that, you can see the linear fit uh, uh, fits well uh, your data. Again, you will be measuring the concentration of a as a function of time, and then you can represent that if this fits quite well. Uh, then you can determine that this is a zero for the reaction, and then the slope you can determine uh, uh, from the, the rate constant you can determine from the slope. Okay? And again, you can proceed uh, the same way with the first and second order reaction. We're just going to plot here uh, how those graphs look like. Again, you always plot time in the x axis, and then in this case, to make sure that uh, you have a linear representation with respect to time, then in the y axis you would need to represent all of this. Okay? So that would be mx plus a, in this case the intercept with the y-axis will be zero. So here you represent the uh, natural log of the concentration of a over the concentration of a at time zero. And again, that should be uh, the equation of a straight line, okay, where the slope is also minus k. Okay, and the intercept with this axis, uh, with the y-axis, will be zero. For a second order reaction with one reagent, again, time appears in the x-axis and then you would represent 1 over a in the y-axis and your representation would be y is equal to a plus uh, mx. Okay, notice that in this case, because the rate constants are always positive, all right, uh, this data should have a positive slope, which is equal to uh, the rate constant. Okay, and the intercept with this axis would be equal to 1 over a naught. And the slope is equal to k. Right, so again, that's, that's the way to uh, figure out where the reaction order and the rate constant is for uh, uh, any reaction. Again, what you will do is try to measure concentration of A as a function of time. 
and then you would do uh, three plots. Okay, in the first one you would plot directly A in the y-axis, time in the x-axis, and see if this fits nicely to a linear fit. Uh, to determine whether this is first order, uh, then you would plot the natural log of the concentration of A over uh, the concentration of A times zero, plot it as a function of time, and if it fits well, then the slope should be uh, minus K. And then uh, for a second order reaction, what you would plot is the inverse of the concentration of A as a function of time, and again, see how good the fit is, and that's how you determine the slope. Okay, so this is a, a, a nice method, an easy method, okay, which uh, uh, has one disadvantage though, and that is that uh, it would only work if you actually have uh, that the reaction order is either zero, one, and two, but that's not always the case. There are reactions that might, might have a negative uh, 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 order, uh, a fractional order, so we haven't seen the integrated rate loss for any of those cases. We have only seen the integrated rate loss for the zero, first, and second order reaction with one reagent. Right, so this method seems to be a little limiting, even though it will, it will work very well uh, if you suspect that the reaction order is either zero, one, and two. Okay, so that is the integration method to determine uh, the rate law. Uh, notice that again, you will be determining whether this is zero, first, or second order reaction from the quality of the feed to each one of these uh, uh, expressions. Okay, and then the rate constant uh, can be obtained from the slopes and expressions. Right, the second method that we're going to see in this video is the half-life method. Right, so an idea then would be to notice that the half-life uh, uh, for zero, first, and second order reactions has varying dependencies on uh, the, con the initial concentration. Okay, so for example, we have seen very clearly that uh, the half-life of a first order reaction is very interesting because it shows no dependence on the initial concentration. And we know that T one half is equal to the natural log of two over K. Okay. Now we could derive the half-life expression for a zero and a second order reaction, and the way to do this would be to simply uh, take the integrated rate loss and then uh, replace the concentration of A by the concentration of A at time zero divided over two, okay, and then T by the half-life. So by the half-life, uh, you will get the expression for the half-life for uh, zero of order or second order. Again, you would replace this by A naught, A, A at time zero over two, and then t by uh, uh, t one half the half life, and that will give you the expression for the half life. Right. So if you were able to do that, what you would find is that for a first uh, zero of the reaction, uh, this is equal to the concentration of a at time zero over two k. And for a second order reaction, what you actually find is that uh, the half life is equal to one over uh, a naught k. Right, so if you have a method to determine uh, the half-life, if you can measure the half-life in your chemical reaction, then it's very easy to, to tell apart whether this is a zero first or second order reaction, right? Uh, it turns out that the half-life for a first order reaction should not depend on the uh, initial concentration. Uh, for a first order reaction, it should depend linearly. And then for a second order reaction, it should depend inversely. Uh, something that is interesting about this half-life method is to notice that uh, there seems to be a dependence of the depend uh, of the uh, uh, power of this um, half life uh, on the concentration uh, of reagent. Notice that uh, when you actually have uh, zero order reaction, then the power uh, of a to the naught is one. Then when you have a first order reaction, the power to, uh, to the a naught is zero. And when you have a second order reaction, the power uh, of the A naught is minus one. Okay, so actually this is uh, um, something that is universal. Uh, we have a look at third order reactions or fourth order order reactions, but those would all uh, uh, kind of follow along this trend. So for a third order reaction, you will have that the half-life will depend on the uh, uh, inverse of the initial concentration squared and so forth. Okay, so again, that is uh, uh, the two methods, uh, two of the methods to determine the uh, rate law for a chemical reaction with one reagent. We have seen the integration method we have seen the half-life method, uh, uh, both are useful. Uh, the integration method is probably a little bit uh, easier to use, uh, uh, but the applicability is not universal. Notice that we can only use these methods if we actually suspect that the reaction is either, either uh, zero, first, or second order. In the next video, we're going to see methods that are, are a little bit more universal, and they, they will allow you to determine the rate law, even if the reaction order is uh, non-integer or negative or uh, no, it has no restrictions.